The Arts Council of England is having its budget cut by almost 30% in the government's spending review. It is responsible for distributing money to hundreds of art venues, theatres and galleries. The government will slash £100 million of their current grant of almost £450 million over the next two years. The arts and cultural activities are a high value-added sector of the economy. The annual turnover of the sector is £10 billion and gives direct employment to almost half a million people, or over 2% of the total employed population. Despite the cuts, many believe the arts are vital to our cultural life and will continue to have a big influence on society. We're a very, very multicultural society. London is a hugely multicultural city. The arts have played a great part in enabling that multiculturalism to thrive. We obviously have a very long, old tradition, cultural tradition, and our tourist industry is very much based on um, our arts. You go to somewhere like the Tate Modern, which is a, a, a free building, and it's, it's th thronging with people. And it's not just thronging with tourists, it's thronging with young people, people of all ages from this city. It's a real example of a kind of people's palace um, cultural venue. So one sometimes wonders how um, that survival continues. But I would say that as a, as a nation, culture has played and will continue to play a very, very huge part in our social development. I, I am passionate about the fact that the arts in all their manifestations are an essential part of daily life. I couldn't imagine life without them. And, and I think that it is fundamental that, uh, that the arts are supported. My only reservation on it is I, I'm not against the subsidy of the arts and I feel that it is incredibly important. What I am against is subsidy junkieism, which is, 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 is an over-dependency on it and a feeling that there's some kind of God-given right. I feel there has to be a vast amount of rigour in the giving of subsidy and wherever possible some kind of evidence, and I know this is built into most subsidy programmes, of self-sustaining futures for the, for, the, for the projects which are funded. What upsets me is when people keep on going back for more without really ever getting to the point of saying, I'm going to even try to become self-sustaining. That, I think, can produce lazy art. For many young people, the arts are the vehicle for their talent ambition and dreams. With these cuts, the only way for some artists to sustain themselves is by creating their own work and to become less dependent on grants or other funding. I come from Iceland. I came, I moved to London. I all of a sudden thought that would be a better place to do that kind of work. I came here and I kind of funded with a friend of mine this former company. Uh, it was mainly to try out things from our own ideas. For artists in, well, in, in general, I think it's, it's it both, I mean, it is scary with the, the cut and it is, but it feels that from what I experience is people are not giving up on working independently, working as an independent. The drive is even bigger, I feel, and of course, it's of course it's scary, and it is. But it is so important that people don't give up on trying to pursue their making their own work. Because of that fear, a lot of us just go and make work ourselves. The severe budget cuts imposed on the Arts Council form part of the government's comprehensive expanded review which aims to reduce public spending by £81 billion in the next four years. The departments for culture, media and sports have had their budget cut by up to 33%. Therefore, the government is determined that the Arts Council should have to take a fair share of the pain. Universities and academies are now designing their courses to encourage independent careers and to nurture artists who are not necessarily going to be dependent on other organizations or on subsidies. The whole ethos of my MA is about a kind of 
water around the rock, you know, the idea of, of finding ways, finding strategies, almost like um, guerrilla tactics as an artist and an art, art practitioner. What my students, when they graduate, expect, they expect to be independent. That means they expect to have to get up and, you know, every morning and make it happen for themselves, whether that's a project that they're creating or whether it's um, a festival they're running or a collaboration that they're seeking or all the other things that they do. We now find ourselves in a position where we can teach the students in a way that when they leave the academy they, they have more chance of being able to sustain themselves from their own artistic practice and therefore aren't reliant on applying for the increasingly small pot of, uh, of available funding for, for purist projects if you like. What we do teach our students is a lot of professional development because we believe it's important that they understand not only how to develop their concepts, how to produce them artistically, but also actually how to, to sell them, how to market themselves, how to, how to sustain themselves as artists. Organizations like Tangle Feed, which is an ensemble theatre company, are dedicated to making original work. Although they receive a small amount of Arts Council funding, they are very much dependent on generating their own means of financial survival. There are a group of artists that make original work together and that work is normally in public spaces. I think there's a history of, uh, in difficult financial climate, artists being more creative with how they make work because people's hands are tied with how they can make work. So if money is tight, the most expensive thing is normally space and equipment. So if you get rid of those variables, you say we're just going to do work anyway and let it pop up. And also the model of making theatre has changed. So I think that the funding cuts will definitely make people make this, this sort of work uh, more frequent. I think the, uh, the lowering of uh, arts funding at the same time as the, uh, the upping of the um, the cost of being a student. I fear it's going to put people off from ever for entering the profession in the first place. In people's minds it's going to be make, make it less likely for them to uh, to be able to earn back the money that they've had to put into their uh, their tuition. At the same time though I feel that if you if you're passionate about a certain art form then there's really nothing else you, you, you're going to do with your life anyway so you're going to, you're going to make it happen. It, it, may, it may frighten some people off but uh, it may create other exciting ways of doing things. A study by Arts and Business has demonstrated that for every pound that is spent on culture, more than two pounds is returned to the economy. Critics believe the cuts being imposed by the coalition government may be too fast and too deep. I think the fear is basically not to be working and, and most actors say that they don't, that they always think they, that it's the next, even though, even though you're working, when you finish work, you don't know when the next is coming. And, and it is scary, but it is, um, but it's also liberating in some ways, I found. As Dame Liz Borgen, chair of the Arts Council of England said, this is about a resilient future for the arts in England. We have taken the brave path of a strategic choices, not salami slices. But we'll still be supporting excellence, exceptional talent and successful risk-taking. The government believes that the public money should be spent wisely. This means that in time of austerity, art organizations and artists themselves have the responsibility to be as efficient and financially sustainable as they can in order to survive. Susana Garcia reports.